Good morning to everyone. Okay, uh, today uh, we are going to study engineering uh, design process. Here is the objectives of the lesson. At the end of the lesson, you should understand what is meant by engineering design or design process. You should understand the phases or states of uh, the engineering design process. And you should distinguish the prescriptive and descriptive design processes. Let's start with the uh, definition of uh, engineer. According to American College Dictionary, engineer is the one who is expert in the design, construction, and use of machines. Or engineer is the one who employs the innovative and methodical application of scientific knowledge and technology to produce a device, system, or process which is intended to satisfy human needs. We may also look into the definition in the Turkish dictionary, EDK dictionary, and you can read it uh, at the bottom. So how about the engineering design? Uh, it is the process of designing a system component or process to meet desired needs. As you can see, both in the definition of engineer and engineering design, there should be a need. Engineering design is, a, uh, is an iterative process. It's a decision-making process, uh, usually implemented uh, iteratively. Uh, and we use or we apply basic science, mathematics, and engineering science to somehow convert resources optimally to meet a stated objective. So here the objective is uh, just about the need, the desired need. Among the fundamental elements of the design process are the establishment of objectives and criteria, synthesis, analysis, construction, testing, and evaluation. Here, uh, ABET stands for Accreditation Board, of, Board for Engineering and Technology. And in Turkey, it's equivalent is MUDEC. And as you know, many of the uh, universities or departments in our faculty uh, are accredited by MUDEC, so uh, somehow uh, endorsed by AVET. So let's see the design process phases or states. Uh, as you might remember from the previous lesson, there are two textbooks. One is the major textbook that we are gonna follow. And the other one is a reference book. So in this slide and in the next slide, I'll be showing phases or states of design process. They are uh, in a sense uh, very similar, but uh, uh, one may go into the details of uh, some of the states and uh, split uh, some of the states into some sub-states, let's say. From the fourth book, which is the fundamental book that we are gonna follow, design process phases are listed on the slide, problem identification or needs assessment, research or problem analysis, requirement specifications, concept generation and evaluation, design phase, and finally, prototyping, constructing, or testing. According to Hyman, 
which is the, the secondary book that we are going to follow. There are some more states described here, but in a sense, they are equal to the fourth uh, description of states or phases. Recognizing the need, as you can see in both, need is the first stage or phase of the design process. There should be, there must be a need. And then we define a problem according to this need and then plan a project, conduct a literature survey or research, let's say gathering information. And then we uh, develop some concepts and uh, we, evaluate those concepts and then select one of those concepts, communicating the design, implementing the design. Here, constructing and testing is uh, uh, just uh, uh, used uh, as a part of the implementation. There are two types of design processes that are uh, used, that are defined in different textbooks. The first one is prescriptive design process. It's rather rule-based design process. We have uh, a sequence of uh, states and there is a systematic receipt for realizing the system. It's uh, uh, represented uh, by some flow charts or decision logic logics. On the other end, for descriptive design process, it's uh, not uh, as formal as in prescriptive design process. There may not be a simple flow chart or uh, flexible transitions among the phases that we have considered in previous slide. Uh, instead, uh, it uh, describes some activities in order to realize the design, but it does not give uh, emphasis on exact sequencing, the order of the phases. So there may be switch between switching between the phases anytime. In practice, uh, it's not easy to uh, describe a design process as prescriptive or descriptive because distinction between the two processes is not always clear. Let's see a, a prescriptive process here uh, based on the phases of design process that we have described previously. We start with the needs, identify a problem and set some objectives. Uh, then we determine requirements, what we call requirement specification stage. So as you can see, we do not go back to the, the needs here. Uh, there is just one way transition from the needs to requirements. And then we simply inspect whether the requirements satisfy the needs or not. If not, then we go back to the requirement specification and then uh, revise the requirements. If this, if it satisfies the needs, then we continue with the next stage. So that's a logical uh, transition here in prescriptive process, as you can see. There is always um, one or two um, ways that we may follow, and it's well described, rule-based. On the other end, for descriptive process, as you can see here, uh, let's say we start with the problem identification. There may be a need from the customer, for example. We identify a problem. This could be the initial uh, phase of uh, design process and we conduct the research and then specify requirements, uh, develop some concepts, 
So this is a tradition of, uh, or for, for the expected sequencing. But in descriptive process, we may go from problem identifications to concept generation in some cases. So there is no restriction to follow this uh, transition, research, specification, concept generation. Or we may uh, identify the problem, conduct the research, specify requirements, and then we develop concepts, and then we go back to the problem identification and then repeat this sequencing again. So there is no uh, restriction uh, among the transitions between the phases in descriptive process. If we go on with the states here, uh, after concept generation, we, we, we design, we develop a design based on the concepts that we have uh, generated here. And then we uh, implement a prototype or construct uh, the design that we have finalized here. And then system integration, system test, uh, delivery or acceptance by the customer and maintenance and upgrade. So this is a tradition of uh, the sequencing, uh, formal sequencing in uh, design process. And in this course, you will be developing such a design. You will be following uh, design process stage for a or an engineering problem that we'll be uh, defining later. Okay, one of the, the biggest problem problems in uh, descriptive process, which is uh, quite applicable in many engineering designs. And from my experience, for example, in defense and security projects, there is always somehow change uh, in the needs of the customers and you have to consider this uh, change what we call uh, formally change request and uh, CR we have to go over the design states uh, sometimes we may go back to the research we, um, we may need to conduct uh, technology research, for example, and then uh, repeat this uh, phases. So let's say we start with the problem and already, comp already completed all these phases. And at this stage, for example, the customer may have a change request and we have to go back to the research again, look into the technology that we may we may use to uh, implement this change to our design and then repeat these phases. So this means that we have to spend uh, more resource because there is going to be delay. And uh, this is usually uh, exponentially increasing function, as you can see here with the project time when we look at the cost to implement this type of, this kind of change, there is an exponential increase here. So uh, then it's very important to, uh, to identify the customer's need in the very beginning of the project. If this is perfectly uh, described state, then uh, we may not need to use, we may not need to change uh, in our uh, design process phases. So in the next uh, three slides, we'll be looking into some uh, electrical engineering design processes. The first one is VLSI, very large scale integration. So simply integrated uh, circuit IC design. 
uh, in an IC, as you can see on the right hand side, uh, that is uh, layout circuit. Uh, here you can see the IC, and uh, we we usually start with the specifications, and then in system architecture we split the. Uh, system or specification, we define uh, functional units uh, in, in system architecture. Uh, some major, fu major uh, functional units are described. Uh, for example, here, uh, there's an illustration, ALU, CU, and MU, memory, control, and arithmetic logic, let's say. These are functional units. And next, we uh, develop a logical design in the form of gates. So the LLU, arithmetic logic unit, can be designed somehow by logical gates. And then each logical gate is uh, simply in physically a, a, a group of transistors. So at the end, we have such a um, hardware, a physical device that we can fabricate. This is called divide and conquer approach. We, uh, uh, we simply uh, break the complex system into some sub modules or blocks. And then each block is again broken down until the design objectives are met, are met for each sub module. Let's see embedded system design. Here, uh, you may imagine um, a, a system like a cell phone or a camera, or let's say autopilot of Tesla, for example. They all are somehow uh, examples of how we use embedded systems. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, uh, it's a hardware and software parts, and it performs some uh, specific operations for a particular system or model. Uh, then we have to split all uh, works into hardware and software in order to achieve uh, an optimum performance. Here you can see, again, we start with requirement analysis and then we specify requirements and then we have uh, a system architecture. This is uh, simply, uh, as in previous slide, the functional units we define here. And then uh, there are two uh, blocks which are uh, somehow implemented in parallel, software and hardware. So we have to think about a team of engineers working for a software design for the same embedded system, just like this. Uh, on the other end, a group of engineers uh, work uh, for hardware design of the system. So there should be an interface design here. So we may simply think of some uh, some mixed uh, uh, engineers group. At the end, there should be an integration and testing. So in our uh, course project, we'll also have some hardware and software uh, models or components. And uh, somehow you as a team uh, split the task and then define a software and a hardware engineer, and then a system engineer. Uh, so uh, uh, as expected, there should be a team leader who is organizing the team. On the left-hand side, there is a block diagram showing um, a processor block with some models. This could be an example of uh, um, of uh, the central unit here in this uh, embedded system. 
Da, how about software design process? Uh, we are electrical engineers and we may not design software, but uh, somehow uh, many of us uh, deal with software design. One of the most popular model is waterfall model. Uh, from Ford's uh, book, our reference, our uh, main textbook, there are five states in software design when we apply waterfall model. Requirement analysis, uh, specifications development, design, test and verification, and maintenance. According to the literature and with my experience with some software teams, uh, this is more practical or uh, more uh, efficient in my opinion. So I just want to share this more general uh, six stage waterfall model. Here we start with feasibility. Uh, usually this two are very critical in my opinion and you have to spend lots of resources to uh, to, uh, to uh, specify the requirements and conduct the feasibility with the customer usually. And then you start design. If you miss something here, then the result will be very, very uh, destructive. And you may, uh, you may spend uh, lots of resources to uh, recover your, um, your uh, uh, delay or uh, your uh, expenses. Next, we have coding and unit testing. Coding seems to be the uh, most popular step, but actually it's not that popular. This, uh, this uh, three are, uh, in my opinion, again, with, the, with my experience uh, on software design teams, these three are more important than coding. Integration and system testing and maintenance. Okay, so this was the uh, theoretical part uh, that uh, I wanted to show. Next, uh, uh, let me show you a sample project. Uh, here we go. This is uh, uh, Appendix A in the textbook. That's a case study. This may help you to understand how we implement uh, our project. Uh, it's a visual aid uh, system. Uh, it's uh, it's. Uh, the case study to examine uh, simply, I mean, to demonstrate application of uh, principles in uh, design process. Uh, we have, uh, as we said earlier, need statement first. What is needed from the customer's point of view? We have to state the need. And then uh, based on the need, we have to determine uh, the goal of the project. So we have to set objectives uh, and then we conduct uh, a literature survey or research, we conduct research uh, using uh, uh, several um, approach that we'll be discussing uh, all uh, in the next lessons. Here you can see objective three, how we split the visual aid system into three objectives and then break those into some others. So next, uh, specification of requirements. Uh, we have engineering and marketing requirements and there should be a justification of why we need this requirement and this uh, 
requirements are somehow uh, related to the need and objectives that we have already set. Finally, we have uh, a conceptual design here. Here is, you can see a physical view. And then we try some technologies, wide beam sensor array here, narrow beam sensor, sensors and motors, motors matrix. These are the technical uh, uh, components or states of the design. And then we use functional decomposition where we define level zero design with some inputs and outputs. There is a model here as the highest level design. Next, we have level one design where we have uh, some modules uh, inside this black box design and the specifications for each of the module and concept selection and software design descriptions or state diagram. So this could be an uh, example of how we will use, how we will implement uh, uh, design process states. I will also show you uh, a report from previous year teams. Here you can see uh, a report from the previous year's team. The project topic in previous year was uh, waveform generator design. It's not uh, stated here. Uh, you can see the team and the content page and the problem state. It's rather sh short. It should be more than that, actually. Objectives uh, should also be detailed background or related works you can see here and here device objective three so the subject is portable waveform generator uh, controlled by cell phone requirements specifications so engineering requirements marketing requirements you will learn all of this uh, in the next lessons constraints uh, economical, environmental, social standards, and design. So we start with level zero design with input output definitions, and then level one design, one step further and split the block into some sub blocks or modules and device selection and project management. So project management here refers to the uh, planning of the project implementation phase. So in this course, you will not implement this project. You will plan the project. You will develop the design, but will not implement that design. You will implement the design in next year's senior design project. And the budget, break even analysis. So how we determine cost and summary and conclusions, you can uh, put some appendix here, circuits or uh, proofs of teamwork. 